Hey TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, what is going on? And here is the video you've been looking for. A do-it-yourself tutorial on building a dodecagram coil. These coils can be built clockwise and counterclockwise and they can conduct electromagnetic fields right in the center point of the coil. Now before I get into detail on the video on how to build this coil, I wanna show you just how cool this thing is. It can utilize electric flux. And the reason behind that is because of all the surface area on the coil. Now I wanna show you how the coil can be used as an efficient collector. This light bulb here is a little four and a half watt light bulb. Um, you can get these at Home Depot. I wanna show you what it does when I put it up to plasma ball and I try to get it to turn on. As you can tell, I have a little, I have a tiny little bit of, well I did have a tiny little bit of electricity there powering the bulb. But now, let me show you what happens when you create a radiant antenna that can collect this energy and turn it into radiant energy. Now, in order for this antenna to work, it has to remain an open circuit. If not, you can easily just short this out and you can't get any power transfer through the coil. Interesting little discovery I made there. So I'm going to simply put this coil on top of the plasma ball using the same bulb and copper wire wrapped around the bulb as you've just been seeing. Watch what happens. See that? Now if I try to do the same thing without the coil, see that? Nothing powers up. This has 200 turns of copper wire around it. Unfortunately, it does not have the proper amount of surface area to conduct the energy with the electric flux and the current coming off the ball. And if you wanna get a little closer version, little closer look at it, as you can tell, I can't get any energy, energy to transfer into that light bulb without this coil to help collect the charged atmosphere being stimulated by this 20,000 Hertz plasma ball. Now the tools you're gonna need to build this is a, what I've been using is a 360 degree helix protractor, but the most common method of making circles and phase points is a precision compass and a protractor. Let's get to the next step here, and I'm going to bring the camera closer and show you how I can create the dodecagram coil First, I'm going to mathematically break down the angle, the degree angles I want to create to form the coil. And then we're going to divide 360 degrees by the number of points I want to get the degree spacing of the coil. I hope that makes sense for you. Here comes the next step. All right, so the first thing you want to find is your phase points. Now, in order to find your phase points, it's actually really easy to do. There is no resonant frequency to the coil, so the coil is just being structured pretty much using basic algebra. Um, let's do uh, 360 divided by 12, for instance, right? That's going to give me 30. Now, that right here is the degrees that you want to divide 360 by. So I can make a point at every 30 degrees. Oops, gotta make that a little more accurate. 90 and 20. 50, 80, 210, 240, 270, 300, 
330. Okay, and now this is where it gets interesting. How do I create the phase points on the coil? So we'll start with point one. You want to find a number that doesn't go into 12 in order to create a complete star. 12 divided by six, if I go six points, one, two, three, four, five, six, I would be right here for two, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, I'm back at the beginning again. With vortex-based mathematics, it's a little bit different. If you find a circle, you can actually um, take a circle and you can go by five and create the, a zero point field inside of your coil just by one, two, three, four, five, and I have two, go one, two, three, four, five, three. Now you start seeing a different pattern here. Okay, now if I go keep doing the same thing, one, two, three, four, five, four, five, six, I'm pretty good at this by the way. One, two, three, four, five, seven, one, two, three, and 12. Now we already have our, Jesus, I'm terrible at fast writing. Now all we want to do for the next part is take a little stencil or a ruler of some kind, and you can simply start going from point one to point two, Go from one, two, three. You go all the way to 12, okay? So I'll complete that real quick and show you how it looks when I'm done. Now once you get the 12, you're starting right from the beginning all over again, creating your perfect and complete 360 degree star. Now this can concentrate the energy right here at the center. Magnetic energy that is. So with this coil frame here, the easiest way to mark your points is by simply, now we have a six inch, I forgot to mention this, but this is a six inch helix stencil. So now we have a perfect six inch frame that can fit point to point. Now I already have my points pre-made. This is how you would do it if you were just drawing it on paper and trying to line up the points. Each point, has a little groove in it that I made. I'm trying to upgrade these little coils by adding uh, little grooves in it so I can uh, wrap the wire inside the groove and not worry about the wire slipping off and making the coil lose tension on one of the phase points. Okay, now that I have my coil ready to get wrapped, it is time to understand what I gotta use to wrap the coil with. Now, I don't just wrap around the outside of the coil, I wrap inside and then I go around the outside of the opposite side of the coil frame. I wrap it around, then I go back on the inside of the other side of the coil frame. So listen to those words carefully and if you have to hit repeat on this video, go for it. So point one is right here, okay? So just like how I showed you on here, you wanna jump five points to your next one going clockwise, okay? So if I go one, two, three, four, five, boom. And then if I do it again, this is where it gets more interesting. One, two, three, four, five, I know it's just counting, but counting can be fun because, well, numbers make up everything. And now, if you keep going every five points, so for instance, if I go one, two, three, four, five, once again, as you can tell, I can create the 12 point coil. Now I'm gonna show you what this looks like after I have all 12 points wrapped with one layer. All right, I have the first layer done. See that? Identical. Now, I'm going to put two more layers on this coil and then we're going to pick up a magnet using uh, my 12 volt DC battery and this coil and I'll show you how a magnet reacts at the center point 
of this coil design. So stick with me, do not go anywhere. You're gonna love this. Oh, and when you're sec starting on your second layer, after you get to your next point, you can't go on the outside of every single phase point. So you'll notice that you can go out on the outside of your starting point, but at your next point, you'll notice you're gonna wanna have to wrap, and this is why you need this specific spool of wire, or this specific spool, so it can fit in between. You stick your spool in between the second fractal point. Okay, see that? The spool goes in between the second fractal point and then you can send it along the outside edge of the third point and then you keep that sequence going. So outside on the next point, inside through the fractal on the third point, outside on the fourth point, so on and so forth. So I'll keep wrapping this and I'll show you how it looks after it has three layers. All right, so I have my three layered coil complete. And as you can tell, it does not look like much. And I wanted to show you what happens when I send a 12 volt DC current through this coil and put a neodymium magnet at the center of the coil. How strong of a magnetic field can this coil truly produce under say 12 volts for instance? You'll notice that it works much different than a standard 360 degree coil. Each point is technically tuned to resonate with the next point. So, I mean, you can do the same thing with multi-layered coils, but let me show you what I mean. I'm going to put the camera down a little bit here. You can see what I'm doing. Now, I'm going to hook one lead up to my coil. Mind you, the more layers you have, and the thicker of wire you have, and the bigger the frame you have, the more electromagnetic field you can conduct in these coil designs. So when I put this magnet here and just lift the coil up a little bit and I add a little DC current, you'll notice something interesting. See that? It is actually pulling towards the uh, I'm not getting a good connection. See that? There we go. All right. Now, let me show you how this coil can conduct electricity. And then I'll show you how this one works compared to this one. And then we will see if we can send a frequency and voltage from one coil to the next in part two. Okay, so I have my plasma ball wired up to my battery here. I'm going to turn on the plasma ball. Oh, jeez, just lost connection with the battery. I'm going to place the coil on top of the plasma ball, our three-layered coil, and just for demonstration purposes, that's what this is all for. Let me show you just how efficient this coil still is at collecting electromagnetic fields. So I'll take this this light bulb here, and check this out. Pretty interesting, right? So this coil is very, very useful at efficiently collecting electric fields. And the more layers you have in the coil, the more efficiently you can absorb electric and magnetic fields along with producing electric and magnetic fields. Let me show you what this coil does when I send a magnetic field or the 12 volts through this coil. And then we'll see how it reacts to those magnets that I was just trying to pick up with the three layer coil. Right here in the center of the coil, pick the coil up a little bit, and now I'm gonna show you how this thing can, can pick up magnets. Okay, so I have to use a good connection for this. Let's see what I mean here in a second. Let's say, get the connection to work. We'll see. See that? There is our magnetic field that we're looking for. See that? Magnetic field produces at the center point and you can see how the magnet will try to go around the center point of 
the coil. So I just wanted to demonstrate this to you. Let me just give you an idea of how that works. Let me take some of that couple magnets off here. I use three magnets. All right, now let's see what happens when I try to pick up the magnet. Can we do it? See that? I can actually pick up a magnet with this one and rotate it in the center. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please be sure to subscribe, comment below, share this video if you know anybody that's wanting to build this coil. I hope you enjoyed what I have built here today. I'm going to keep a series of videos going on these dodecagram coils and polyphase point coils I have been creating. I'm also going to be producing flywheel generator designs and polyphase alternating coil array designs that you will love because if you don't think this is cool, I don't know what is. I think this is one of my coolest discoveries yet. And it all happened thanks to a little discovery called Vortex-Based Mathematics. Hope you all enjoyed. Peace out.